So now that we've seen what NCR does, we've seen what factorials are, now we can actually finally do the binomial theorem. So this is going to help us in order to uh, solve more complicated binomials. So let's take a look at it. This is again for, bi for expanding a binomial like a plus b to the power of n. By the way, I love this one. This is perfect for here. Look, expand. <laughs> just made it bigger. <laughs> So this is how we do it, okay? I just want to show you again uh, how it would go. If we were going to do the Pascal's triangle method, I just want to compare that, okay? So if I try to do like, um, let's just say I tried to do a plus b to the power of three, let's just pretend. If I was going to do Pascal's triangle method, remember I would first go write out Pascal's triangle, one, 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 two, one, then I go one, one plus two is three, two plus one is three, this is one. I would then write these all out, wouldn't I? I would say this is one, and then I would write it like this, plus three. I just wanna show you a contrast to this right here because this is gonna be really important. This method I'm about to show you is gonna be much faster. I just wanna show you it's actually the same thing. So if you know about Pascal's triangle method, I've got another video that I did about it. But here we go, it goes like this. So one, then a, b, then three, then three, then one. So in other words, these are your coefficients, right? These, these numbers right here. This is your coefficient, one, three, three, one. That's why we found Pascal's triangle. And then remember what we learned, I'm not done yet, sorry. I have to also do uh, the powers. The powers uh, have to go down, so three, two, one, zero. And these ones over here, they go up. They go zero, one, two, three. Now, this formula right here, you get on your formula book list. You don't have to memorize it. I just want to show you that this is actually telling you what I've just done. Watch it very carefully. First of all, let's look at this. The very first term, if I actually did it, let's say I actually wrote it all out. One times a cubed times b to the zero. Well, b to the zero, isn't that just one? Anything to the zero. So do you notice that it's just one times a cubed? See, it's just a cubed. Let's me hear this next one. What is this? This is three a squared times b. The next one then is, do you see it's three and it's a b squared. The next one is, well this one right here cancels out and I just get b cubed. I just want to show you if I actually fully expanded it, this is what I would get. Now look carefully at what this formula actually tells you. It says, hey your very first term is just a to the power of n. Well in this case a was just a, n was three. Do you notice? Look, a to the power of n. The next one, they say it's NC1. Turns out that's how you get that number three. So this right here is NC1. Do you notice then the next one is gonna be NC2, then NC3, and so on. So these NC things, they just keep going up. That's to tell you your coefficients. Notice what happens, it says, look, your powers of A starts off as N, the next one goes down by one. Well, yeah, look, three, two, one, zero. Look, it goes down by one, it keeps going down by one until there's none left. Conversely, look at what happens with the b's. There's no b here. That's because it was b to the zero. Next one has one b. Do you see there's only b to the power of one? Keeps going up until you keeps going up until you're up to b to the n, which is the last term. So if you look carefully at this final form, it looks like this. The trick is, and this is what I, I'm going to tell you this, that if you're HL, you need to be able to use this formula quickly. It just, it takes practice. If you're SL, what I recommend is this, uh, use a hybrid. So there's a much faster way of doing this, and that's, I like Pascal's triangle method. You know, this way of just writing A's and B's and doing your exponents going down, your exponents going up. Except I don't like finding uh, Pascal's triangle if, it's, if the exponent is too high. It's really long to do. So what I like about this method here is it allows you to kind of cheat, see? What these things are right here, let me just write it down, a quicker way of doing it. So let's just say, if I was gonna do this thing, this A plus B cubed, what I would actually do is I would write it like this. Watch very carefully, I do n, r. I'm gonna write it with this notation, you know, for these coefficients. Watch very carefully what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, all right, well, there's how many terms? There's gonna be four terms. So I'm gonna write it like this. I always do a space, you know, and then I go like this. One, two, three, and four terms. So I'm writing out actually the fourth term here, so like this. This is one, two, three, four terms. The very first one, watch carefully now, I'm gonna do this. Got it in purple. This is nr. So this is if it's to the power of three, it's going to be three zero. Next one's going to be three one. Next one's going to be three two. Next one's going to be three three. This is this ncr notation. This is like three c zero like this. 
just so you can see how I'm doing it. Then these next terms, of course, those are still the A's and the B's. See, I like the Pascal's triangle sort of method of doing it, this algorithm. This one right here I think is nice. Then it goes, you know, 3, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So do you see, this way, this hybrid, is we use the Pascal's triangle method, except we don't actually need the triangle. Do you see how powerful this is? Because if I have to the power of 18 or something like that, just think, all right, well, it's going to be 18, 0, 18, 1, 18, 2, 18, 3, 18, 4, 18, 5. So you can sort of figure it out a lot quicker what you need. Then you focus on the one you need. Let's pretend you just needed this one. All right, fine. Then you go ahead and calculate 3, 1. In other words, what's 3, C, 1? And you'd use your formula here to get it, right? So let me show you a real example here. This is one uh, from an uh, IB question, actually. So find the constant term in the expansion of x squared plus 1 over x to the 6. I didn't make it too, too hard. It's medium difficulty, right? Because it's to the power of 6. It's not that, that crazy. But I don't want to do it using Pascal's triangle method. I'm going to do it using this hybrid. So first, I'm going to write out all of my different uh, terms. So I know I'm going to have seven terms. If I want to do this whole thing, I'm going to have seven terms. There's always a coefficient, an a, and a b. Right, so I'm just leaving space for it. So although it seems annoying, which it is, I'm just going to show you quickly how to set it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so what is this first one? It's going to be n, so which is 6 here? 6, 0. This is the important part. This is 6, 1. This is 6, 2. So basically, if I need any of these coefficients, here's how I'm magically going to get any coefficient I need. Wait a second. I can't seem to count. I see my mistake. I did two twice. There you go. Six, four, six, five, six, six. Well, then I do um, my x squared and my one over x everywhere. So you see, this is slightly long. And when you get more practice, you're going to see you don't even have to write them all out. But it's not a bad idea just to write them out until you find the one you need. OK, so x squared, one over x. This is slightly long, but it's not that difficult. And now I know what my powers are going to do. My powers are going to go mm, down for these ones here. So it's going to go 6, 5, 4, whoops, can't seem to count here, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And my exponents are going to go the opposite for the b here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So. Now that I've done this, let, we don't have to do all of them. Try to find out which one will be a constant term. And remember what constant term even means. It means the power of x is actually to the 0. In other words, there's no power of x here. So somehow they cancel out. Well, look carefully at this one right here, the powers of x's. Let's just look at powers of x. Let's just look at this one here. So this one here would be x squared to the 6. That would be x to the 12. All that would be divided by x to the 0. That doesn't work. That won't cancel out. I'm going to have power of you know x to the 12. So that doesn't work. So it's for sure not that one. Do you see how I can sort of determine it's not that one? And so on. I can keep going like that until, look very, very carefully. One of these will actually cancel out the x's. Do you notice I'm dividing by x's, so I have to be careful. Look, this one is going to be x to the 2 times 4, which is 8, divided by 1 over x, x squared. So that means this right here, they won't cancel out. Do you see which one does cancel out? There's one of them that does. Look right here. Look at this one. Look very carefully here what's going to happen. x squared squared is going to give you x to the fourth over x to the fourth. Hey, they're going to cancel out. That's why I can just focus now like a laser on just this one. I ignore the rest of it. They're dead to me. And I just look at, all right, I need 6, 4. I have x squared squared. Let's just make sure it works, right? It's x squared squared times 1 over x to the fourth. Well, what does that give me? I have this 6, 4, whatever that is. We'll determine it in a second. x to the 2 to the 2 gives me x to the 4th. Divide that by 1 to the 4th, which is just 1. Uh, sorry, times 1 to the 4th over x to the 4th. And look at that. Thank goodness they do really cancel out. So I just need to know what is 6c4. Now, I could do this without a calculator if I wanted to, right? I could use that formula, or I could just use a calculator. It depends on if I'm allowed one or not. Let's say I am allowed a calculator, then I'll just do it like this. I go to Menu, I go to Probability, I go to Combinations, and I say 6, 4. This way, I didn't have to do Pascal's triangle. So I know then that the answer is just 15, and I'm done. 
Wasn't that actually quite easy? So this is sort of how we can we can look at these kind of questions here. Okay, I just want to make sure you feel sort of semi-comfortable with these. It does take some practice, but this here is how we can do this. Okay, the constant term, you can find it quite quickly. We can find any term really. So this method, I like it because we just skip doing the triangle. We just we basically use Pascal's triangle method without the triangle because we use these things. These things are here called NCR. Now, when do we actually use these things? I mean, yes, we use them in math class. We use them in programming. Uh, binomial coefficients are really helpful for combinatorics or probabilities. If you're HL, you're going to see these all over the place. I've even seen one use where, uh, to distribute IP address. Uh, this is a internet protocol. This is, you know, it's really interesting how they do this. Economics, you know, you can do probabilities based on distributed variables. They actually have to use these uh, binomial coefficients. So there are reasons why you might need them, but if nothing else, you need them for your class. So there you go.